Okay, MC1 and MC2 deal with the time value of money. Before we step into the problem, let's take a quick second and talk about the time value of money. A general rule of, of thumb, the concept that we're going to talk about is that when discussing time value of money, a dollar today is worth more than a dollar in the future. How does that happen? Well, if we were to draw a timeline and have a beginning and ending period, and we were to say that if you got a dollar today, you could take this dollar and invest it in every single period you earn interest on it. But what's more is that if that interest was then put back into the original investment, it would compound upon itself. Meaning that in our first example for MC1, we have 8% interest. Between period one or zero, I guess you could say, in the end of period one, you would earn 8% on that one dollar. But then if you move on to period two or the beginning or the end of period one and the end of period two, right? In between that time, you would earn not just interest on the dollar, but you would also earn interest on the 8% that was originally earned during period one. Does that make sense? So you would continue to compound upon itself and continue to reinvest and grow and grow and grow. Therefore, if you receive this dollar right now, you would have the interest effect over periods. And if you received it here, you would lose out on that interest effect. Therefore, a dollar today in an interest sense is worth more than a dollar in the future, okay? With that in mind, in our first problem, we are asked to state what is the present value of $500,000 to be paid in 10 years with an interest rate of 8%. So again, if we draw our timeline and we call this beginning point over here present value, and we call this ending point over here future value. Our question is, is that in between this time there are 10 years, what is the value of $500,000 to be received 10 years from now if there were 8% interest? Meaning, what is the amount that I could invest at the beginning or point zero? What could I invest to earn $500,000 in total, to get $500,000 in total, not the interest is earned at $500,000, but for the total amount to be $500,000 in the future after 10 years? That's the question. So we'll do what we call discount the $500,000 from what the value is in the future to what it's worth today. Because remember, if a dollar today is worth more than a dollar in the future, the opposite is true as well. So you have these future dollars, these $500,000, we need to discount them, or essentially you can think of it almost like a translating currency as well. We need to change it to what today's dollars is. These are future dollars. You can almost think of it as a different currency. And we need to convert it to what today's dollar is, this currency, okay? So we wanna know what is the lesser amount that we could expect except right here, that we could invest, earn interest of 8% that would compound upon itself to where at the end of 10 periods, it gives you $500,000. That's the question. A couple ways that we can do this. We can plug information that we have into these formulas, meaning that I is going to be your interest rate and N is going to be your number of periods. But we have tables that we use, the common tables, that have already done this for us. They're called the time value of money tables. So there's four of them that we deal with in our book. Um, one is a future value. Future value will tell us if we invest today, what will it end up being in the future? There's present value, which will tell us if we have something in the future, what is it worth today? And those are the single sum tables. Those are your first and second tables that you deal with in Appendix C in your book, okay? Single sum, which is representative in this problem, means that there's one single amount. In this case, it's the $500,000 you receive at one time, some period in the future, okay? That's the single sum. Those are the first two tables that you deal with. In MC2, our next problem, we're gonna deal with what we call an annuity. An annuity represents an equal consistent payment. So instead of getting $500,000 at a point in the future, we instead have equal consistent 
payments throughout the entire period, okay? And we'll talk about that one in a minute. So let's deal with our single sum. So we, we have the option of dealing with one or two tables, either the future value table of a single sum or the present value of a single sum table, right? Well, what we want to know is the present value. We have the future value. We know what that is. It's $500,000 10 years from now, right? We want to know what's that worth today. What is the lesser amount we could take right now, invest at 8%, and earn it to be $500,000, the total to be $500,000 10 years from now, okay? So we could either plug into this formula or we can use the tables and drop the amount into these formulas. Because what the tables have done have actually calculated what we call an interest factor based upon these formulas of $1. So this is the present value formula. The present value is the table that we're going to choose because that's the question that we have. We want to know what the present value is, right? The tables have actually calculated using these formulas of varied interest rates and varied time periods of $1. And all we have to do in order to make this calculation quicker is simply take our future value, which we know of $500,000, and find the appropriate interest factor and multiply it out because they've already done the work for us. So we only need to know these two things, 8% and 10 years. And real quickly before I move on, I want to mention that although in this problem I'm referring to 10 years as being the periods or whatever, notice that that could be different. Um, because we talk about interest rates being compounded, right? the number of periods really affects the number of times that it is compounded. So when we deal with this period concept, right, you have to take into consideration how often the uh, number of, of the periods are that it's being compounded, whether that's monthly, uh, quarterly, semi-annually, or annually. In this instance, it's annually because we're not told otherwise, okay? So 10 years is going to be the number of periods that's going to represent our N, and then 8% is going to be the interest factor. Again, if you compound it at a different rate, though, or at a different um, time period, not annually, whether it's semi-annually or whatever, you would have to adjust also the interest rate. So whatever adjustment you make to the compounding, you'd have to do the opposite for the interest rate, okay? All right, so with this in mind, let's take a look at our tables. If we flip to Appendix C and look at the present value table that's on page C15. It's called table C2. We find that if we take the number of periods to be 10 and we take the interest rate to be 8%, we find that our conversion factor is 0.4632. So if we take 500,000 right here and multiply it by 0.4632, we get the present value amount that we have is 2000 or 231,600. This is the amount that if we took this amount and invested in it for 10 years earning 8% compounded, we would get $500,000 at the end of it. Okay? 